You can call me Luke. I see, Sir Luke. <laughs> no, just Luke. As a child of the original Star Wars generation, the idea of Star Wars figures being anything except three and three quarter inch scale was an alien concept to me. Over the years, I'd been witness to the 12 inch Kenner dolls being forgotten, and I was there when the red tags were put on the micro collection as it languished in massive stacks on toy store shelves. History had borne out that Star Wars toys in any other scale just don't work. But time makes fools of us all. Apparently, somewhere between the DC Universe figures and the Marvel Legends line, the toy industry had decided that 6-inch was the new hotness. So in 2013, Hasbro announced the 6-inch scale Star Wars The Black Series figure line. I ignored this at the time for multiple reasons. Firstly, the name of the figure line is stupid. The Black Series? What is this, premium whiskey? The name was pretentious. Horrendously pretentious. To this day, it still rings stupid. Secondly, Hasbro claiming that this would be the definitive line of figures for these characters was laughable. And I was proven correct with their very first action figure, Luke Skywalker in his X-Wing pilot suit. He was supposed to be from the original film, but he came with a lightsaber and blaster from The Empire Strikes Back. And he had a lightsaber hook on his flight suit strap, which wasn't actually a thing. The complaints about the misscaling of R2-D2 persist to this day. So right from the get-go, the Black Series wasn't definitive. In fact, it was downright inaccurate, and it rapidly started to pull Hasbro's focus away from its three and three-quarter inch figure range. Soon after the launch of the Black Series, Bondi jumped into the game with their SH Figure Arts six-inch Star Wars line, fracturing the collector community even further. Now it wasn't just a conflict between two scales, but two companies making the same scale. And while Hasbro's distribution of all their licensed products continued to go down as we closed in on the end of the 20-teens, Bondi's prices on their line continued to go up, while access to their figures as exports from Japan was a headache as frustrating as trying to find Hasbro figures. I remained steadfast in my conviction that Black Series wasn't worth it, and stayed out of the fray. Then in 2016, with the release of Rogue One, I picked up a few Black Series figures for the first time. Jin Erso, K2SO, and Cassian. I needed them as a mention in a video that focused mainly on the three and three quarter inch line. It wasn't long afterward that Hasbro upped their game with new, more realistic face sculpting. The result was so impressive, I knew I wouldn't be able to pass these up, especially given that Bespin Escape Leia was immediately made for the assortment. I told myself I would focus only on core characters from The Empire Strikes Back. I thought that would limit my indoctrination into the line. Thanks to my friend Venkman, I managed to pick up the rest of the Empire cast. Despite seeing the very outdated face on Luke Skywalker compared with Han and Leia, I felt I was done with my Black Series collecting. What I did not expect was Hasbro updating the Bespin face for a re-release just a few months later as part of their 40th anniversary collection for The Empire Strikes Back. So I told myself I would pick up that Luke and be done. But then they announced a Snowspeeder Luke, a Dagobah Luke, a redone Hoth Luke. With good intentions firmly in place, I said I would only pick up the Lukes from Empire. However, a chance encounter with an amazing Mara Jade custom meant that I suddenly had the Walmart-exclusive Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker and Admiral Thrawn as well for a Zahn novel trio on my shelf. And then Hasbro's immediate release of the Endor heroes without waiting for the 40th anniversary of The Return of the Jedi meant the dam had effectively burst. I told myself I would collect the various trios of the heroes from the original trilogy films and put together a line of Luke Skywalkers from across the three films, and that would be the end of the journey. Because that's the problem with Hasbro. Continual revisions and versioning of figures you've already bought ten times over in the past. Remember that inaccuracy on the figure? Well, they fixed that, but will inexplicably break something else at the same time. Yeah, Luke's face has been corrected, but now he doesn't come with... the right belt. It doesn't make the toys feel special in my eyes. It makes them feel like boxes of expendable materials for ruthless kit bashing to achieve desirable results that Hasbro refuses to deliver for customers. As part of my quest for a solid Luke Skywalker lineup, I took the same tack I had with my Captain America figure collection. Look at each figure as a box of parts, not a sacrosanct collectible in its own right. A donation of a land speeder Luke Skywalker was married to the updated head used on the Yavin Ceremony Luke Skywalker. 
Skywalker. And while the Han and Leia from this film haven't been given the updated face treatment, I don't find these faces as grossly out of range as the early Lukes in the Black series. In fact, I really don't have an issue with this Han Solo head. You have to remember, I grew up with a Han Solo that looked like this. So from where I'm standing, this Han blends pretty well. The Yavin Luke would become a fodder godsend for my project, because he ended up being a peg warmer and sold for well under his sticker price secondhand. The second one's head was transplanted onto the Stormtrooper Luke's body. Again, the Han Solo head looks acceptable for display to my eye until a better option surfaces from Hasbro. The third Yavin Luke's head was used on Wedge Antilles' body. Wait a minute, you're exclaiming, Wedge? Why not the Luke X-Wing figure? Well, I make every attempt to waste not, want not. I knew the Yavin Luke bodies were piling up like corpses. Wedge's body is the Luke X-Wing body, because Hasbro recycles everywhere it can. I wanted a Snowspeeder Wedge more than an X-Wing Wedge, and I needed a Snowspeeder Luke head as part of this project. So it was an opportunity to make my Empire Strikes Back Wedge, get the Luke head and helmet, and add Battle of Yavin Luke Skywalker to my lineup with minimal fuss. The fourth and final Yavin Luke was just that. Yavin Luke. He's one of the few Lukes that works right out of the box. The Return of the Jedi Luke Skywalkers were pretty straightforward. Luke, during the Jabba's palace sequences, is as is. Some people don't like his face and think he looks better if you use rubbing alcohol to take the rouge out of his cheeks. Again, you're talking to a Kenner kid, so from my vantage point, it looks pretty good. Does the Endor Luke head look better? Arguably, though his hair is slightly smushed for that helmet to fit on there. To get a decent Death Star final duel Luke, I had to track down the original Black Series Jedi Luke, because the Endor Luke, while using the same base body, did not include the original belt, and also deleted the option to change the front of the tunic to an open flap style. However, that last omission wasn't a deal breaker, as Luke's tunic stays closed throughout the entirety of the saber fight and his confrontation with the Emperor until the lightning starts. The smushed hair could also be interpreted as messed up from combat exertion, so it works. I've considered swapping the heads of the Endor Luke and Jabba's Palace Luke, but the Jedi Knight Luke's outer tunic seems to require a slightly larger head to make the proportions work, and I suspect the Endor head would look too small. So by removing the poncho and helmet and adding the original belt, we get a solid final duel Luke Skywalker. The Yavin Luke would also come back into play with the Endor trio of heroes. Hasbro, in its very finite wisdom, gave Princess Leia the wrong blaster. They packed her with the gun from the original movie, likely to save money. The only way to correct this is to approximate the actual pistol by cutting the barrel down on the gun she comes with. And since that very same pistol came with the Yavin Luke, might as well take a gun from one of these since they won't be needing them anymore and giving Leia her proper pistol. The Empire Strikes Back was where the most serious modern modifications would have to take place. Yes, for a lot of these previously mentioned head swaps, some neck joints had to be slightly enlarged with hand drills, or neck posts had to be enlarged with heat shrink, but most of the modifications were straightforward in that respect. Thankfully, the Bespin Luke, Dagobah Luke, and Snowspeeder Luke were just fine right out of the box. Some people have expressed dissatisfaction with the Bespin Luke face, but I mean, when compared to the original Black Series figure, is it even a contest? Yeah, his hair might be too orange, but I do see a clear effort to depict Hamill in this sculpt. And disappointingly, the final Dagobah Luke head looked markedly inferior to the prototype photos from Hasbro. What many had hoped would be a Bespin head swap option were sorely let down. It would be too small, and it wasn't as accurate as the promotional photos indicated. Personally, I was fine with the Bespin Luke head in the grand scheme of things. Sal at Two Cents Toys pulled all the potential of the Bespin Luke sculpt to the surface with a custom Luke he gifted to me, depicting his battered condition on the Falcon after being rescued by Leia and Lando. Speaking of Lando, I had a good look at both the original Lando and the one with the revised head. In an odd turn of events, I cannot bring myself around to the new face sculpt. I just don't see Billy D. Williams in it as much as the older face sculpt. Something about the paintwork on the new one is way off, and the proportions of the eyes relative to the rest of the face doesn't represent the actor nearly as well as the original version. That only left the Hoth Luke to deal with, and this one was going to be the biggest chore. The original Black Series Hoth Luke had a face that is as expected, but Hasbro has just released revised editions of both Hoth Luke and Hoth Han Solo, now with the updated face technology. Sadly, these figures fall far short of expectations. Han Solo comes with a stretched, ugly version of the gun belt he wore in the original Star Wars film, not The Empire Strikes Back, and it makes the coat look fat and frumpy, and his hood 
hood is a separate piece, which, unless he's displayed from specific angles, makes him look like the bonneted mom in Little House on the Prairie. A $4 purchase of a Black Series Han Bespin belt and a careful combination of heat and patience got the correct belt on him, which greatly improves his look. There's nothing I can do about the ugly bonnet masquerading as a hood. But Hoth Luke, this was a horrendous problem. The improved face sculpt looked worse than the original release. Truly awful. The problem was that the original face also wouldn't mix into my lineup of custom combo Luke Skywalkers, so I had to MacGyver a solution. I quickly realized that the Black Series Hoth Soldier had a superior head design. Details such as the scarf wrapped around the snow hat and the radio device were far superior to the Luke version, where the scarf magically sprouted out of the side of his head without explanation. Also, the Rebel Soldier had a unique gimmick, face swapping. His head was literally designed to take different faces. The trick was finding the right face and then figuring out how to get it to fit. I zeroed in on the Luke Snowspeeder face, because it is generally considered one of the best Mark Hamill sculpts achieved by the Black Series to date. Even more importantly, it's from the same film, and it's a face that isn't surrounded by hair. Underneath the helmet, he's wearing a skull cap of sorts, which means his face is isolated almost identically to the way his face is surrounded by the Hoth hat. The trick was, how do I separate the face from the head and then shape it to the size and dimensions needed to fit the Rebel Soldier face mount. It was a matter of patience, and repeating to myself that less was more. Cutting the Snowspeeder Luke head in half from top to bottom, then carefully sanding, trimming, and filling the sides and corners. Also cutting the open area into the back to fit into the Rebel Soldier head. I kept myself from getting impatient, because it's always easier to take away more material than it would be to put material back if I cut away too much, and I was also constantly checking the Luke face against the soldier face for shape and depth matching. After several hours of tedious work, I had a Hamill-accurate face that fit right into the Rebel Soldier head. A slight modification to the neck hole for that head, and it fit right onto the Hoth Luke body. I still have some minor finishing work to do to the face, but I'm proud to say you're seeing it on there without any need for glue, and it's a massive improvement on that god-awful head from Hasbro. Barring any future impressive improvements to the Han Solo and Leia faces from the original film, I don't see myself buying many more Black Series figures. Maybe if they update the Rogue One Heroes faces, I'll buy those, but as I said, like the Marvel Legends figures, these products are revised so often to tempt buyers to repurchase them, they lose that sense of uniqueness. They're not something to be preserved or protected but parted out and used to create something better. Because that's how Hasbro handles this line, despite their claims in 2013 that each release would be definitive. The Black Series is the farthest thing from definitive I've ever seen. For all of its inaccuracies, the Kenner Darth Vader was that line's Darth Vader from 1978 to 1985. The company that made it stuck with it, making it legend in the minds of a generation. And now it's an iconic collectible. The Black Series is pure marketing cynicism, all the way to the name of the line itself. None of these will ever be icons. They're designed to literally just stand around. And you never become legendary by standing around. I'm not going anywhere. Hope you enjoyed that, everybody. If you want to see more videos about modern Hasbro, you can watch our Marvel Legends Captain America figures feature here. And if you just want to see more videos about Star Wars toys, you can watch our Star Wars Follies playlist here. And now I'm going to Tashi Station to pick up some power converters. <laughs>